All right, hey, uh, we are going to go over uh, first first lesson, first module, which is safety. So it was, should be quick. Uh, I'm going to close this out here. Pull up module one. This PowerPoint is what we're going over. All right, so most of you've had electricity at this point. Everybody should have, so we know some of this stuff. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on electrical safety. Um, obviously, at this point, we are bringing in gas and electric, so you're going to need to be aware of both. Um, so just for argument's sake, uh, just kind of run through a little bit of both of this here. Um, Let's see. Okay, so obviously wear the right protective equipment uh, for what you're doing. Uh, that's going to depend, you know, where you're working, what you're working on, uh, but just be aware of what you're supposed to be wearing. Electrical safety. Um, once again, not spending a lot of time on that at this point since we've already been through most of this. Fire extinguisher types, uh, if you didn't know this, they are rated in certain types for certain types of fires, um, type A, type B, type C, and then some have um, all types. So you need to know what type you're using uh, to use it on the right kind of fire. So a lot of them are universal, um, but like if you're working on electrical equipment, <clears throat> you wouldn't want to use a type A because that uses basically water. Um, so that's going to be dangerous and uh, more harmful to the equipment that, you know, that's got an issue so uh, just be aware for this class uh, type b flammable liquids gases such as gas propane solvents uh, natural gas is going to fall in that as well you probably keep one of these on your truck possibly um, all right so getting into gas stuff um, probably the biggest issue fire and carbon monoxide uh, CO. So carbon monoxide, the biggest issue with it is uh, it's colorless, odorless, tasteless, and it's toxic. Um, it's produced whenever we have incomplete combustion. Um, usually when you have a loss of oxygen for some reason. So you have a, you know, an incoming uh, air supply coming into your flame that doesn't have enough oxygen. It's oxygen starved. Maybe it's blocked or it's got something over it or uh, your exchangers clogged, something like that. So you've got incomplete combustion. Um, that's our biggest issue. Um, a furnace can produce carbon monoxide and still be safe. Um, it's not obviously running right, but as long as your exchanger's good, your pipes are good, uh, everything should make it outside away from your house. And if it's vented properly, it should not come back into the house. Uh, so that's another thing you've got to worry about is your vent um, location and the uh, the state of your vent. So if it's in good condition, if it's leaking, um, it's not installed correctly, all those could lead to uh, safety issues. So it's not just uh, something that you install just to get rid of the air. It's something that could pot potentially get rid of uh, harmful gas. So uh, your code books are going to go really in depth on uh, code books and installation manuals. So if you're putting in a furnace, it's going to let you know how they want that, uh, how they want that installed, how they want it placed um, incoming and outgoing um, code books <clears throat> uh, imc book and your nfpa 54 which are both your books that you're going to use on the journeyman test uh, both of those are really heavy on vent questions so it's a good time to kind of get familiar with that stuff as well uh, because that's a big portion of your journeyman test is ventilation questions um, but for now uh, carbon monoxide if you were to have a leaky furnace or you have some way that it's getting into the house, that's an obvious issue that's going to um, potentially lead to sickness, uh, suffocation, death. Uh, all those things are, are a possibility with CO, uh, carbon monoxide poisoning, which can you know make somebody really sick. Uh, so you really want to watch out for this. Uh, it's not a bad idea to carry a small detector with you. Uh, a lot of people don't, but it's probably not a bad idea to do that as well. Uh, just at all times, especially, you know, during heating season, 
um, not a bad idea to keep keep one in your bag or on your on your mm-hmm. side. Okay, so the issue with CO is that it um, it's hard to identify. Most people that have it don't realize that they even have the presence of CO until it's too late um, because you can't smell it, you can't taste it. It's not like it doesn't smell like gas. Um, it's just a byproduct of incomplete combustion. So um, that's why it's so dangerous. So carbon monoxide detectors obviously are going to be a must in any house that's burning gas. All right, so just to give you an idea, um, concentration of CO is measured in PPM, which is parts per million. Um, ideally, you should have zero PPM at all times. Uh, anything above nine PPM is considered something that needs to be addressed. Um, so, I mean, you could have some slight presence of CO and it would still need to be looked at to see where that's coming from and why that's the case. But anything above nine uh, is going to go above you know, the recommendation. So should be zero, but you could have you know up to nine. Anything 10 or above is going to be indication of an issue. Um, going on down, you can kind of see the, the side effects and the time limits that you should be exposed to each of those. And right now I know this you know, PPM doesn't mean a lot to you, but um, your meters are going to read this. And so if you see anything above you know, anything in the double digits, uh, that's going to be, that should raise a red flag for you. Um, so 35 PPM is the recommended exposure limit. Uh, we're going to get into uh, combustion testing later, and this will get more into uh, limits and times and all that. But uh, anything over 200 PPM, uh, you're going to, probably the biggest symptom that you're going to notice if you've been around carbon monoxide for very long, um, even for a short amount of time is you get a really bad headache um, <clears throat> after maybe even an hour uh, or less. Uh, that's probably an indication of some pretty severe levels. Anything over that and you're really in danger of, of long term issues or possibly death. So like I said, it's not a bad idea to keep keep something on hand. Uh, so here's some of the sources that you'll run into. So it's not always a furnace. It's not always something that's even ours. It could be uh, people with with a vehicle parked close to a house where it's somehow drafting back into the house. <clears throat> it could be uh, a garage, an attached garage that's uh, got a car running in it. Maybe it's closed especially. So they always recommend open the door for that reason. Um, that's another reason why homes, uh, we typically recommend that a home has is neutral or slightly positive pressurized. Uh, so you're actually pushing more air out than you are. You're bringing more air out than you are in. Um, so your house is under a slightly positive pressure. So that way, if there ever was any issues with outcoming or incoming carbon monoxide from an outside source, um, that should limit the, you know, its ability to come into the house because your house is slightly under pressure. Um, you know, you're talking very minimum, but that is something to consider. Uh, furnaces, that's us, obviously. Boilers, that could be us as well. Water heaters, possibly. <clears throat> that's still going to fall under us, and it could fall under plumbing as well. So plumbers can work on gas water heaters the same as we can. Uh, ranges, uh, any other sorts of gas appliances uh, could be sources of carbon monoxide as well. But the biggest one is probably their furnace uh, and their water heater because they're using the most. All right, so you're going to want to have some sort of detector or some sort of uh, sensor. Um, you can have a handheld, <clears throat> like I said, that you pull out every time you walk into a building. Some people actually carry one clipped on their side, a smaller, uh, what they call a uh, low level CO detector. Uh, that's just going to measure very low levels of carbon monoxide uh, that may not trip a home uh, CO detector. So don't go by the CO detector at the house. Don't. Don't use that as your guide. Uh, if it's not going off, then you're fine uh, because you still could have low levels. A lot of times those are fairly inaccurate and uh, not measuring that low level stuff. So uh, just always be aware of it as well for yourself and for your customer or whoever you're working with. But they do need carbon monoxide detectors. So one of the things that uh, you'll see in some of these videos in this 
the, the upcoming modules they talk about co detectors and where they should be located uh, you want those located low uh, usually below um, waist level uh, closer to the floor because that's where that is going to settle um, it's going to kind of lay toward the bottom and so you'll want those in a place where they can can pick that up early you don't want it up on the ceiling or anything like that if possible uh, this is not to be confused with a smoke detector fire detector <clears throat> fire alarm because measuring very different things now a fire alarm smoke alarm is a good thing to have near a furnace uh, or in your in your home obviously but even in the room where your furnace is uh, a smoke alarm would be good with the carbon monoxide detector close so that way you're kind of catching up on both confined spaces um, is something that we don't really think about a lot because we're in and out of them so much but according to osha um, it is something that is probably one of the more dangerous things that um, the guys run into out there in the field um, and don't even realize it. You know, you're exposed to all sorts of things that are in a confined space, gas, um, low level oxygen. Um, so like, for example, when I was at MSU, we would have to occasionally go into some tunnels, um, steam tunnels and things like that. Um, when we were doing that, we had to keep a, a uh, oxygen sensor on us at all times. Uh, if that thing started going off, we had to get out of there. Um, so they were really, really uh, particular about confined spaces uh, because you don't want to get back in there and pass out or something or be exposed to something and then not be able to get out. So um, know your, you know, let somebody know you're in there, obviously, um, have an access point and uh, be able to get in and out easily enough. Obviously, that's not always the case, especially in residential because you're in tight spots all the time but um, a low level CO detector and oxygen sensor might not be the worst thing if you're constantly in some pretty pretty tight sketchy places, but um, <clears throat> probably more industrial and commercial. It's gonna actually use those, but uh, wouldn't be a bad idea for residential as well. And um, that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, like I said, the main thing we're worried about uh, difference between a gas furnace and, and other things is you're working with a live flame. So you've got you know, a live flame in a house or under a house or in an attic, um, places that you wouldn't normally want that. But as long as it's handled correctly and as long as it's running properly, shouldn't be an issue. Um, so it's our job to determine that it's doing that. Um, flame and then carbon monoxide are the two that we're really worried about. So uh, we'll be getting into installation, service, how the furnaces work, and then eventually how to how to do that stuff in a way that we know that we're being safe. So uh, furnaces make people nervous, and they probably should because uh, you know they're a different, a little bit different beast. But um, they're nothing to be afraid of. But you just have to be cautious. Uh, just like working with electricity, uh, you guys got to know its capabilities and make sure that you've really done your doing your job to the best you can because uh, you know bad things can really happen from that uh, versus maybe refrigeration you know the worst thing that could happen is you lose your refrigerant or uh, you know if something goes wrong with your system but <clears throat> if you've done something wrong with, uh, with gas you know people could get severely hurt injured lose property uh, burn somebody's house down so all those things are, are stuff that we really want to avoid um, but we still got to work around it so this class will hopefully prepare you for that. So just um, check out the rest of the course and uh, hopefully you'll be prepared to work on them.